Have you ever wondered if a single philosophy could transform the way you live, think, and see the world around you? What if I told you that such a philosophy exists not in the abstract musings of modern self-help gurus, but in the pragmatic wisdom of Japan's greatest swordsman? A legendary figure who not only conquered in battle, but also mastered the art of living. Miyamoto Musashi, a name that resonates through the annals of Japanese history not just for his unparalleled skill with the sword, but for his profound understanding of life's deeper truths. Musashi was not only a warrior, but a philosopher, artist, and writer, whose life's journey culminated in a succinct yet powerful manuscript, the Dokodo, or The Way of Walking Alone. Penned in the seclusion of a mountain cave, weeks before his death in 1645, the Dokodo distills Musashi's lifelong learnings into 21 precepts. These principles are not just tactics for combat, but guidelines for living with independence, dignity and profound integrity. But why should we, centuries and cultures removed, care about this ancient samurai's final words? In our fast-paced, interconnected world, where distractions are constant and pressures mount from every direction, Musashi's teachings offer a strikingly relevant blueprint for navigating life's challenges with grace and strength. The Dokodo's principles challenge us to confront our own lives with a sharper lens, encouraging a journey inward to discover what it truly means to live fully, independently and authentically. In the next few minutes, we'll embark on a journey through these 21 principles, not as distant historical curiosities, but as living wisdom for the modern soul. You'll discover how embracing reality, mastering desires, cultivating integrity, fostering social harmony, and upholding honor can transform your approach to life's myriad challenges and opportunities. Each principle, a stepping stone on the path to a more deliberate and fulfilling existence, invites us to reflect, adapt, and grow in ways we might never have imagined. But how do these ancient precepts translate into our daily lives? Can the wisdom of a 17th century samurai truly guide us in the 21st century? The answer lies not in the literal application of Musashi's words, but in the underlying spirit of his philosophy. It challenges us to ask deeper questions about our values, motivations, and the legacy we wish to leave behind. It prompts us to consider what it means to walk our unique path with courage, discipline, and a profound sense of purpose. As we delve into each principle, I invite you to reflect on your own life, the choices you make, and the values you hold dear. This is not about adopting a new set of rules blindly, but about engaging in a dialogue with the past to illuminate the present and shape our future. By the end of this journey, you will not only have a deeper understanding of Musashi's Dokoro, but a renewed perspective on how to navigate the complexities of modern life with wisdom, courage, and integrity. Let's uncover the timeless wisdom of the Dokodo together and explore how its principles can inspire a more intentional, fulfilling, and independent way of living. Continuing with the journey into the heart of Musashi's Dokodo, we find ourselves at the threshold of perhaps its most compelling teachings, embracing reality and practicing detachment. These principles at first glance might seem like hard pills to swallow, especially in a world that often encourages us to chase after what we want with relentless zeal. But Musashi, through his life and words, offers a different path, one paved with acceptance detachment, and a broader perspective on our place in the world. Principle 1. Accept everything just the way it is. 
Imagine you're playing a video game and you come across a level that seems impossible to beat. You try everything you can, but no matter what, you just can't seem to get past it. Now, you have two choices. Keep getting frustrated and angry at the game, or accept that this is just a part of playing and figure out a new strategy or find a way to enjoy the challenge it presents. Musashi's first principle is a lot like choosing the second option in real life. It's about seeing things for what they are, not what we wish they would be. This doesn't mean giving up when faced with challenges. Instead, it's about recognizing the reality of a situation and dealing with it head on, without letting our emotions cloud our judgment. When we start to see the world this way, a lot of our everyday frustrations start to seem smaller and we find a certain peace in knowing that we're doing our best with what we have. On a deeper level, this principle challenges us to confront the very nature of our frustrations and disappointments. Often, our discontent stems not from our circumstances, but from the gap between our expectations and reality. When we expect traffic to be light, a friend to always be on time, or a project to go perfectly, we set ourselves up for frustration. Musashi's call to acceptance is a call to bridge this gap not by lowering our standards, but by preparing ourselves mentally for the myriad outcomes life can present. It's about finding stability within ourselves that isn't easily shaken by the external world. This inner stability becomes a source of strength, enabling us to face life's unpredictability with a calm and centered presence. Principle five, be detached from desire your whole life long. Now let's talk about desires. We all want things, maybe a new car, a big house, or even something as simple as wanting our favorite meal for dinner. Desires are natural, but have you ever noticed how, after you get what you wanted, the happiness it brings doesn't last forever? Sometimes it doesn't even make us as happy as we thought it would. Musashi tells us to be detached from these desires. This doesn't mean we can't ever want things but we shouldn't let our happiness depend on getting them. It's like enjoying a scoop of your favorite ice cream without feeling sad when it's gone because you know it's part of the experience. This detachment leads to a kind of freedom because when we're not constantly chasing after things we want, we can enjoy life as it comes, finding happiness in the moment, in the simple things that we often overlook. To understand the depth of this principle, consider how desires often shape our paths. They can dictate our choices, pushing us toward endless cycles of wanting and acquiring only to want again. This cycle can lead to a life filled with chasing after fleeting moments of happiness while missing out on deeper satisfaction. Detachment, as Musashi presents it, is not about giving up on joy or ambition, but about finding a source of contentment that isn't dependent on external achievements or possessions. It's about enjoying life's journey without being overly fixated on the destination. When we learn to find joy in the simple act of living, our daily experiences, regardless of whether they align with our desires, become richer and more fulfilling. Principle three, do not, under any circumstances, depend on a partial feeling. Feelings are tricky. One minute we're on top of the world, and the next we might feel like everything's falling apart, often based on something as fleeting as a comment from a friend or a grade on a test. Musashi warns us not to make decisions based on these temporary feelings. It's like deciding not to play soccer anymore because you missed one goal. If we acted on every whim, we'd be like a leaf in the wind, constantly tossed around without any direction. The key is to recognize our emotions but not let them dictate our actions. Instead, we should make decisions based on what we know, what we've thought about, and what's important to us in the long run, not just how we feel in the moment. Exploring this principle further, we see the danger in allowing transient emotions to guide significant decisions. Our feelings are influenced by a multitude of factors, our environment, 
past experiences and immediate circumstances, many of which may not accurately reflect reality. Acting on these emotions can lead us to make choices that feel right in the moment, but don't serve our long-term interests or align with our deeper values. By cultivating a practice of pausing and reflecting before acting, we develop the ability to respond to situations rather than react impulsively. This approach doesn't mean ignoring our emotions, rather, it involves acknowledging them while also considering the broader context of our decisions, leading to actions that are more aligned with who we truly are and what we truly want from life. Principle 4. Think lightly of yourself and deeply of the world. In a world that often tells us to look out for number one, Musashi's advice might sound a bit strange, but think about it this way. When you're part of a team, whether it's for a school project or a sports team, do you only think about what you're going to get out of it, or do you also think about how you can contribute to the team's success? Musashi is suggesting we take the second approach to life itself. It's not about thinking less of ourselves in terms of our value, but about not being self-centered. It's about looking beyond our immediate wants and considering our actions' impact on others and the world at large. This broader perspective can make our personal problems seem less overwhelming and inspire us to contribute positively to the world around us. This principle invites us to engage with the world from a place of humility and compassion. In a society that often measures success by personal achievement and accumulation, Musashi's perspective offers a radical shift. Thinking lightly of ourselves doesn't mean diminishing our worth, but rather recognizing that we are part of a much larger tapestry of life. Together, these principles form a foundation for living that is both deeply personal and universally applicable. They teach us to navigate life's challenges with a sense of equanimity, to find fulfillment beyond the endless pursuit of desires, to make decisions with clarity and wisdom, and to live with a sense of purpose that transcends our individual existence. In embracing these teachings, we can cultivate a life that is not only more peaceful and content, but also richer in meaning and connection. As we venture further into Musashi's teachings, we come upon a set of principles that invite us to consider the role of self-discipline in achieving inner peace. This journey into self-discipline isn't about imposing strict rules upon ourselves but discovering the freedom that comes from understanding our desires and emotions. Let's explore these principles further, unraveling the wisdom they hold for us. Principle 2 do not seek pleasure for its own sake. Imagine you have an entire cake in front of you. Eating a slice is delightful, but what happens if you eat the whole cake in one sitting? You'd likely end up feeling sick. This principle is similar. It's not about avoiding joy or pleasure in life. It's about understanding that chasing after these feelings without considering the consequences can lead to unhappiness. Pleasure, when pursued as an end in itself, often leads to a cycle of wanting more and never being satisfied. Lasting fulfillment, on the other hand, comes from achievements and experiences that have deeper meaning. It's the difference between the temporary happiness we might get from buying something new versus the lasting satisfaction of learning a new skill or helping a friend. The first is fleeting while the second adds to our sense of who we are and our connection to the world. By focusing on what truly enriches us, we cultivate a life of genuine contentment and joy. Principle 10. Do not let yourself be guided by the feeling of lust or love. Feelings of lust and love are powerful, and while they can add beauty to our lives, they can also cloud our judgment. Imagine you're on a boat in the middle of a storm, and your emotions are the wind and waves tossing you around. If you let those forces guide you, you might end up lost or shipwrecked. But if you learn to navigate those waters with skill and awareness, 
you can find your way through the storm. This principle is about recognizing the strength of our emotions, but not allowing them to dictate our decisions. It encourages us to take a step back, breathe, and think about our actions and their consequences. This doesn't mean we shouldn't feel or express love, rather we should love wisely, ensuring our decisions are made with clarity and consideration for ourselves and others. Mastering our emotions in this way leads to healthier relationships and clearer decision-making grounding us in a sense of inner peace. Principle 11. In all things have no preferences. This principle might sound strange at first. How can we not have preferences? Everyone likes some things more than others. Musashi's point here is not about eliminating preferences, but about not being bound by them. It's like when you go to a restaurant and your favorite dish isn't available, so you try something new and discover you like it just as much. Being open and flexible in this way allows us to experience life more fully. We can find joy and value in various experiences, not just the ones we expected to enjoy. This openness leads to a sense of peace because we're no longer constantly striving for things to be a certain way. Instead, we can appreciate life as it unfolds finding beauty and learning in every moment. This principle teaches us the power of adaptability and the peace that comes from embracing life's diversity with an open heart. Principle 13. Do not pursue the taste of good food. At first glance, this principle might seem to advocate for a bland diet, but its wisdom goes far beyond our culinary choices. It's about moderation and finding joy in simplicity. In a world that often tells us more is better, Musashi reminds us of the beauty in simplicity. When we constantly seek out the most exquisite foods, the most thrilling experiences or the latest gadgets, we set ourselves on an endless quest for satisfaction that never quite fulfills us. Learning to appreciate simple pleasures, a home-cooked meal, a walk in the park, the company of friends, teaches us that happiness doesn't come from external sources but from our ability to enjoy what we have. This principle doesn't mean we should never indulge or enjoy fine things. Rather, it encourages us to find balance and recognize that some of the most profound joys in life come from its simplest aspects. Together, these principles from the Dokkodo guide us toward a life of self-discipline and inner peace. By understanding the fleeting nature of pleasure, mastering our emotions, embracing openness and flexibility, and appreciating the beauty of simplicity, we cultivate a life that is not only more peaceful and content, but also richer in meaning and connection. Musashi's wisdom teaches us that true happiness and fulfillment come not from the external pursuit of desires, but from the internal mastery of oneself. Through this mastery, we discover the freedom to live fully, the clarity to make wise decisions, and the joy of engaging with the world in a more profound and meaningful way. Diving deeper into the essence of Musashi's teachings, we approach a section that speaks volumes about integrity and personal growth. Through his principles, he invites us to look beyond the surface of our lives and question what we truly value, believe in, and how we confront our ultimate fate. Let's unravel these principles further and discover the profound lessons they hold. Principle 14. Do not hold on to possessions you no longer need. In a world where having more is often seen as better, Musashi's 14th principle stands out as a beacon of wisdom. It's easy to get caught up in collecting things, thinking that each new gadget, piece of clothing or toy will make us happier. But have you ever noticed that, after the initial excitement wears off, you're left feeling just the same as before, maybe even a bit cluttered and overwhelmed? Musashi suggests a different approach, 
a minimalist lifestyle. Imagine your life as a backpack that you have to carry everywhere. Every possession is something extra you need to pack into it. The more stuff you have, the heavier it gets, making it harder to climb mountains or cross rivers. By choosing only to keep what we truly need or love, we lighten our load, making our journey through life easier and more enjoyable. This principle isn't about depriving ourselves, but about focusing on what truly matters – our experiences, relationships, and personal growth. It's about creating space in our lives for what enriches us, not just what fills our closets. Principle 15. Do not act following customary beliefs. This principle challenges us to think for ourselves, to question the status quo, and not to follow paths laid out by society without considering if they're right for us. From a young age, we're taught to follow certain paths, go to school, get good grades, choose a career, and so on. But what if there's more to life than just following the script? Musashi urges us to think critically about the beliefs and customs we've been taught to accept without question. It's like being in a maze. If you follow the crowd, you might find your way out, but you'll only ever see what everyone else sees. By questioning the paths laid out before us and daring to carve our own, we might discover new, more fulfilling routes. This principle encourages us not just to accept things as they are, but to actively engage with our beliefs and decisions, ensuring they reflect our true selves and not just what we've been told to value. It's about authenticity, carving out a life that's genuinely ours. Principle 17. Do not fear death. At first glance, this principle might seem daunting. After all, fear of death is one of the most common fears. But Musashi's intention isn't to make us fearless in the face of danger, but to inspire us to live more fully by acknowledging the impermanence of life. Think of life like a sandcastle on the beach. We know the tide will eventually wash it away, but that doesn't stop us from building it, creating intricate designs and enjoying the process. In the same way, recognizing that our time is limited can inspire us to make the most of it, to focus on what's truly important and to live in a way that, when our time comes, we can look back without regrets. It's about embracing each moment, pursuing our passions and cherishing our relationships. This principle teaches us that the awareness of life's impermanence is not something to fear but a reminder to live deeply, authentically and with purpose. Musashi's principles on integrity and personal growth challenge us to reassess our priorities, question our unquestioned beliefs, and embrace the finite nature of our existence. They teach us that growth comes not from accumulating more possessions, but from cultivating our inner selves, that true wisdom lies not in conformity but in critical thought and authenticity, and that a full life is not one lived in the shadow of fear, but one that dances with the knowledge of its own impermanence. By integrating these teachings into our lives, we learn to live with a lighter load, carve our own paths with confidence, and savor the fleeting beauty of our existence. Musashi's wisdom, centuries old yet timeless, offers a blueprint for living that honors our deepest selves and the transient precious nature of life itself. As we journey further into Musashi's teachings, we arrive at principles that not only guide us in our internal quest for peace and growth, but also shape our interactions with the world and those around us. These principles serve as a compass for navigating social relationships and our own self-reliance, emphasizing the importance of harmony, acceptance, and adaptability. Principle 7. Never be jealous. Jealousy is like a weed in a garden. If left unchecked, it can overtake and ruin the beauty of everything around it. It's a feeling we've all experienced at some point. Seeing someone else with something we want, 
whether it's a new car, a beautiful relationship, or even just attention from others. Musashi teaches us that jealousy detracts from our growth because it focuses our energy on what others have, rather than on developing our own strengths and capabilities. Overcoming jealousy isn't about pretending we don't want things, but about shifting our perspective. It's about celebrating others' achievements and using their success as inspiration to pursue our own goals. When we free ourselves from the grip of jealousy, we open the door to personal growth, allowing us to focus on our journey and the steps we need to take to achieve our own form of success. This principle encourages us to water our garden, tending to our growth and blooming in our unique way. Principle 8. Never let yourself be saddened by a separation. Loss and change are inevitable parts of life. Whether it's moving away from friends, ending a relationship, or dealing with the loss of a loved one, separations can be deeply painful. However, Musashi reminds us that the pain of separation is a part of life's cycle, not an end to our ability to find joy and connection. Dealing with loss and embracing change require us to find strength within ourselves and to remember that life is a series of connections and experiences, each shaping us and teaching us in different ways. Instead of being consumed by sadness, we can learn to cherish the memories and lessons each relationship brought into our lives. This principle doesn't diminish the pain of loss, but offers a perspective that helps us navigate it, reminding us that every ending makes room for new beginnings and opportunities for growth. Principle 9. Resentment and complaint are appropriate neither for oneself nor others. Holding on to resentment is like carrying a backpack filled with rocks on a hike. It only makes the journey more difficult. Musashi advises us to let go of resentment and to refrain from constant complaints, recognizing that these emotions and behaviors sap our energy and can poison our relationships and outlook on life. Resentment often arises from feeling wronged or slighted by others, but dwelling on these feelings keeps us stuck in the past, unable to move forward. Similarly, when we complain, we focus on the negative, overlooking the potential for change or the aspects of our lives that are positive. Learning to let go of resentment and to minimize complaints doesn't mean we ignore problems or injustices. Instead, it means we address them constructively, seeking solutions and focusing on actions that can improve our situation. This approach not only enhances our well-being, but also contributes to a more harmonious environment for everyone involved. Principle 12. Be indifferent to where you live. This principle might seem odd at first. After all, our surroundings can have a big impact on our lives. But at its core, Musashi's message is about adaptability and finding contentment regardless of our circumstances. It's easy to think we'd be happier if only we lived somewhere else, had a better house, or were in a different situation. However, true contentment comes from within, not from our external conditions. Being adaptable and finding joy in various circumstances doesn't mean we shouldn't strive to improve our living conditions or seek out environments that inspire and uplift us. Rather, it means we don't let our happiness depend solely on those factors. We can find beauty and peace in the simplest settings if we're open to seeing it. This principle teaches us to build our inner sanctuary, cultivating a state of contentment that travels with us no matter where life takes us. Musashi's principles in this section encourage us to navigate the social landscape and our inner worlds with grace, focusing on personal growth, adaptability, and the strength to let go of negative emotions. By overcoming jealousy, embracing the lessons in loss and change, letting go of resentment, and finding contentment regardless of our surroundings, we cultivate a life of harmony and peace both within ourselves and in our relationships with others. 
these teachings guide us in building a resilient and adaptable spirit, capable of thriving in the ever-changing tapestry of life. As we delve into the final lessons of Musashi's teachings, we explore concepts that go beyond the immediate and tangible aspects of life, guiding us toward contemplating our legacy and the true essence of honor. These principles encourage us to look at life from a broader perspective, focusing on the values we live by and the legacy we leave behind, rather than the material possessions we accumulate. Principle 16. Do not collect weapons or practice with weapons beyond what is useful. Musashi lived in an era where martial prowess was not just a matter of honor but survival. However, even in such times, he advocated for practicality over excess. In today's world, we might not wield swords or spears, but we have our weapons, skills, knowledge, and resources. His teaching here is about focusing on what's truly useful and necessary. Imagine you're packing for a camping trip. Every item you add to your backpack should have a purpose. Packing too much slows you down, and the same goes for life. Collecting skills, gadgets, or even relationships that don't serve a meaningful purpose in our lives can distract us from our goals and weigh us down. This principle encourages us to be mindful about what we choose to carry in our life backpack, ensuring that everything we hold on to serves a purpose, contributing to our journey rather than hindering it. This principle, at its heart, is about recognizing the difference between being prepared and hoarding. In a world that constantly pushes us toward excess, more gadgets, more skills touted as essential, more connections, Musashi's wisdom calls for a radical assessment of what truly adds value to our lives. It's a call to declutter not just our physical spaces, but our mental ones as well. By focusing on what genuinely serves us, we hone our ability to distinguish between mere accumulation and meaningful preparation. This discernment leads us to a lighter, more focused existence, enabling us to move through life with agility and purpose. It reminds us that true preparedness for life's challenges isn't about having an arsenal at our disposal, but about possessing the right tools and knowing how to use them effectively. Principle 18. Do not seek to possess either goods or fiefs for your old age. In a society that often equates success with material wealth, Musashi's 18th principle challenges us to rethink what it means to be truly prepared for the future. It's like being a squirrel gathering nuts for the winter. While it's wise to prepare, hoarding more than we need can lead to unnecessary stress and takes away from others. This principle is not about neglecting our future security, but about understanding that our well-being in old age isn't solely dependent on material wealth. True security comes from cultivating relationships, community, and a sense of purpose that sustains us, not just a stockpile of goods. It encourages us to invest in our personal growth, relationships and experiences, which are the true riches that sustain us, providing a sense of fulfillment and happiness that material possessions cannot match. His call to look beyond material accumulation for future security challenges the modern fixation on wealth as the sole measure of a successful life. It's a reminder that the richest moments often come from non-material sources. The stories shared with friends, the laughter with family, the quiet moments of reflection and connection with nature. Focusing on these intangible assets fosters a sense of fulfillment that outlives the transient satisfaction derived from possessions. This principle encourages us to build a foundation of meaningful relationships lifelong learning, and personal achievements. It's about creating a legacy of experiences and wisdom to pass down, understanding that these are the true treasures that enrich our lives and endure beyond our time.
Principle 19. Respect Buddha and the gods without counting on their help. Musashi's spiritual guidance reminds us of the importance of self-reliance and personal effort. It's easy to fall into the trap of waiting for a miracle or divine intervention to solve our problems. However, this principle tells us that while faith and spirituality can provide comfort and guidance, the responsibility for our actions and their outcomes lies with us. It's like studying for a test, while it's okay to hope for a good outcome, the actual work of studying and preparing is up to us. This teaching doesn't diminish the value of spiritual beliefs, but emphasizes the need to take active steps toward our goals, using our abilities and making the most of the opportunities we're given. It's a call to action, reminding us that our fate is in our hands, and while we may seek guidance from higher powers, the real work of building our lives is ours alone. Principle 20. You may abandon your own body, but you must preserve your honor. For Musashi, honor was a paramount value, transcending even the instinct for survival. In modern terms, it's about living according to our values and principles, even when it's difficult. It means doing the right thing, even when no one is watching, and standing by our words and beliefs, even if it comes at a cost. This principle challenges us to consider what we stand for and how deeply we're committed to those ideals. It's about integrity, being consistent in our actions, words, and beliefs. Honor is the legacy we leave behind, the mark we make on the world through our choices and actions. It's what people remember about us, the stories that will be told long after we're gone. This principle invites us to live in a way that, at the end of our days, we can look back with pride, knowing we lived true to ourselves and made a positive impact in the world. Embedded within this principle is the idea of empowerment through personal effort. While faith can be a source of strength and comfort, he emphasizes the importance of taking responsibility for our actions and their outcomes. It's a call to cultivate a sense of agency, to recognize our power to effect change in our lives and the world around us. This principle doesn't negate the value of spiritual support, but places the onus on us to act to make decisions that align with our values and move us toward our goals. It teaches us that while we may draw inspiration and solace from our faith, our lives are ultimately shaped by our choices and efforts. This recognition of personal responsibility fosters a deep sense of empowerment and resilience, equipping us to navigate life's challenges with confidence and integrity. Musashi's teachings on legacy and honor guide us toward a deeper understanding of what it means to live a life of significance. They remind us that true wealth is not found in material possessions, but in the richness of our character, the depth of our relationships, and the impact of our actions. These principles encourage us to focus on what truly matters, to live with purpose and integrity, and to build a legacy that reflects our highest values and aspirations. Through his wisdom we learn that the most valuable treasures we can leave behind are the lessons we've learned, the love we've shared, and the honor with which we've lived every day of our lives. As we reach the culmination of Miyamoto Musashi's profound principles, we encounter a guiding light that illuminates the essence of all his teachings. Principle 21. Never stray from the way. This principle is not merely a concluding thought, but the very heart of this philosophy. It's a call to steadfastness and integrity, urging us to discover and adhere to a personal code of conduct that navigates us through life's tumultuous seas. Imagine life as an expansive ocean and yourself as a sailor. The vast waters represent the unknowns and challenges we all face, storms of doubt, waves of challenge and winds of change. In this vast ocean your way is your compass, a set of core beliefs and values that guide your decisions, actions and interactions. 
Just as a compass offers direction to a sailor in the boundless sea, your personal philosophy or way provides you with direction amidst life's uncertainties. Finding your way is about understanding who you are at your core, what you believe in, and what you stand for. It's about asking yourself the big questions. What is truly important to me? What kind of person do I want to be? How do I want to treat others? The answers to these questions become the stars by which you navigate your life's journey. They're not fixed points, but rather lights that guide you, helping you to make choices that align with your deepest truths. Adhering to your way requires courage and integrity. It means making choices that are consistent with your values, even when it's difficult, even when it means standing alone. It's easy to follow the crowd, to drift along with societal currents, but staying true to your way demands resilience and determination. It's about being honest with yourself, acknowledging your mistakes and learning from them. It's about striving to be better, not for accolades or recognition, but because it's aligned with your personal philosophy. Musashi's admonition to never stray from the way is a reminder that our lives are defined not by the external successes we achieve, but by how closely our actions align with our inner truths. This principle teaches us that true fulfillment and peace come from living authentically, from making choices that reflect our values and aspirations. It encourages us to build a life that is not just about surviving the storms, but about navigating them with purpose and integrity. Living by this principle transforms how we see the world and interact with it. It shapes our relationships, our work, and our contributions to society. When we are guided by a clear sense of purpose and a strong moral compass, we become beacons of light for others. We inspire those around us to find their own way to live lives of purpose and meaning. In essence, his final principle encapsulates the journey toward self-mastery and personal excellence. It's a call to action, urging us to live not by the whims of circumstance, but by the strength of our convictions. It reminds us that while life's journey is fraught with challenges, having a way provides us with the clarity and strength to face them head on, to grow from our experiences, and to carve out a path that is uniquely ours. As we reflect on the significance of having and adhering to a personal philosophy, we realize that it's not about rigidly sticking to a set of rules, but about being flexible and adaptable, learning and growing with each step we take. It's about living in a way that, at the end of our journey, we can look back with pride, knowing that we remain true to ourselves and the way we chose to follow. Musashi's teachings through this final principle offer us a timeless wisdom that the greatest victory is not over others but over the discord within ourselves achieved by never straying from our way. Remember, life is an incredible journey filled with highs and lows, victories and defeats. Yet at the heart of this journey is your way, a beacon that guides you through the darkest nights and the fiercest storms. It's your inner compass pointing you toward true north when the world around you seems to spin out of control.